Boredom sucks. You know when you're looking at the clock and you're waiting to get out of work or school and the time feels like it's taking forever. Or where you're doing something and you just feel like it's dragging on and on and on. That feeling unfortunately doesn't go away when we play a tabletop role-playing game sometimes. Sometimes we're in boring games. And sometimes we are even in boring campaigns. So today in this video, I'll be discussing what do you do when you get bored of your campaign? Because as someone who runs several different systems, who's ran campaigns and one shots, I've gotten bored of the games I run and some of the games I've played. So today we'll be tackling that very question. First, let's identify why your game might be stale to begin with. So we need to identify where your boredom is coming from. And you're not going to get anywhere by just keeping it inside. So the first place should be to respectfully talk to your fellow players and game masters why you feel the way you do. I know, the obvious answer, communicate to your players and GMs, but I need to always make that very clear because RPGs are a social game. You can't play them if you don't communicate your worries, concerns, and interests. So you need to figure out whether the problem is one of play style, communication, or say whatever one brings to the table. Because if you don't know where that reason is coming from, then you can't make a strategy to respond. Boredom can derive from these places. Is it a role-playing moment? Is it during combat? Or is it during an in-game conflict or puzzle? You need to understand where that feeling of boredom is coming from. For instance, last year I was playing in a Rifts game, a multi-genre role-playing game created by Kevin Simbita. The game lasted for about a month, but any time we played, I felt bogged down. Combat felt like a slog, and it did not help that the game was way more crunchy than I was expecting. And looking back on it as a player, I should have first told my GM how I felt. I was not enjoying the long drawn out combat sections of minimal roleplay. And secondly, I should have explained to my game master what kind of game I was looking for. So like many other issues, this was a matter of communication. And that means telling your GMs about whether or not you're having fun and what kind of fun you want at your table. Explain to your game master where you feel most disinterested in your game. And from there, you should make actionable steps together to improve the experience for both of y'all. It could be switching systems, or it might be playing a new character in the game. Another option is to go to your other players. Ask them how they're feeling about the game. Are they bored as well? Or are they having fun? By talking to your other players and talking to your GM about possible solutions, you don't get frustrated after your GM continues to do the same thing over and over again. As for a GM though, what do you do? I have ran campaigns that have gotten bored with. They feel like a drag and like the campaign is never ending. And I think this feeling can arise from a number of different reasons. One, you don't have any insight on where you think the campaign is going. Two, nothing in your campaign feels special. All the NPCs, encounters, and or scenarios feel similar. And three, your players never show up enthusiastic to your game. It could be any of those reasons or a reason I didn't mention, but those are some reasons why my campaigns have felt bored. Some solutions to this are this. First, buckle up and adapt. Every campaign has the rough patches. Your campaign, whether it's a pre-written game or a homebrew, will have those moments where you are frustrated and just not having fun. That does not make you a bad GM. Sometimes you get into a funk, sometimes you just feel out of ideas, and sometimes it just feels boring. It could be maybe your mental health that's off one day, or maybe it's work burnout. Sometimes in those moments, it's best to just keep running the game and see if your mood shifts maybe a session or two later. Secondly, try to go back to where and what inspired your game. Every campaign has to have a starter. Maybe it was an inspiration from a book you read, or maybe your players inspired in a great campaign from you. Whatever the inspiration is, go back to the roots and observe what about those humble or horrifying beginnings inspired you. 
And I even say take some time to write those down on paper, think about them, and even journal on it. Three, keep the campaign short. Sometimes boredom is not about the content, but about the length. And a campaign that can feel like it's never ending can get very tiring. A shorter campaign with clear maximum of sessions can really fuel creative juices. One, because they provide a clear start and end for the players and GMs to look forward to. Two, there's a challenge to be had by fitting your campaign into a number of selected sessions. As a game master, you're bound to improve your skills by running a game that is way more sequential and fit into a schedule than one that never ends. At least, I think so. Thirdly, you can expand on different plot threads later on if you cannot get to them all in a short campaign. This means you could run multiple short campaigns that build off of each other and inevitably create a longer campaign from all of that. And fourth and final, it allows for both the players and GM to test the waters between each other if this is maybe your first time running a campaign. However, I will say a shorter campaign might not work for you. For example, character development takes a major hit if you're running short campaigns, so do take that into consideration. Four. Work the story elsewhere. A long spanning campaign's narrative is one major reason people run long campaigns. The players and GMs want to see what happens to the story through the characters' interactions and mechanics. But you can easily get bored of this story because maybe the story has gone in a way that does not interest you. The players are loving this subplot, maybe related to a high society drama and intrigue, but you find it absolutely tear-jerkingly boring. If this is the case, then it's best to ask your players if you could shift the story. Maybe see about exploring a different subplot that is tangentially related to something you would care about. And be sure to ask permission and agree on how you'd like to move the story forward. Do not just switch the entirety of the narrative by consulting them. That will lead you to being on RPG horror stories and no one wants to be on there. Fifth and final, put the campaign on close. While I think you should try all these options, at the end of the day, sometimes your best doesn't even matter. So if players feel disinterested, you feel disinterested, and no one's really showing up to your games, I say end on a positive note. Because nothing's better than ending on a positive note, even if the ending was abrupt, than ending on a sour note where everyone is miserable and unhappy. Similar to any relationship you have, you don't really want to burn bridges unless you know you can burn them. On the topic of player and GM boredom, there is an interesting RPG stack post that got me inspired. They stayed. There are a lot of different styles of GMing and playing. Even if the GM is using one that you personally don't like, that doesn't mean it's wrong or objectively unenjoyable. Whatever the case, they are the GM and they are not doing anything quote unquote wrong any more than you are playing quote unquote wrong by wanting more plot. There's nothing wrong with the games you inherently play. If the players love high role play or high combat and the GM doesn't want that, that disillusionment can lead to frustration and inevitable boredom. But the only way to really resolve that is by communicating your intent and what you want. If you're feeling bored, let your game master or the player know. You cannot get to the heart of any emotion by bottling them up. Talk of others, find vulnerability, and communicate. Because much like the games you run, the adventure is fun with a crew. So don't do it alone. In one way I get plenty of inspiration is by looking at older D&D resources. And I have an excellent video talking about this old D&D DM's guide for all of your inspirational needs over here. Finally, a special shout out to my Patreon supporters, Jakibi, Harrison Parker, and Paul Bope for your continued contributions. You too can support me on Patreon over here. And you can also support me over at my coffee down below in the description box. And as always, I'm your average everyday queer host, Blurdy Disposition. Y'all have an awesome day. Ciao.